Today we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at the buoyancy effector. And the important parts in this scene are the box that I've created. It's just a simple sprite. I've gone ahead and added a box glider to it. Now you can have any sort of collider. Actually, I've never tested with an edge collider. But as far as any of the primitive shaped colliders, they should work. And you've also got to add a rigid body because you want it to be able to be affected by physics. I've left everything at their default state, so I haven't touched anything. And the other one is this water sprite that I've added. I've done nothing to it. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the water sprite. I'm gonna go ahead and, well, we're gonna add a rigid body 2D. Actually, no, we're not. <laughs> we're gonna add a box collider because that's the shape of my water. So I'll add a box collider 2D. Then I'm also gonna add the buoyancy effector 2D. And right away, we get a little notice here saying that this effector will not function until at least one enable 2D collider. Okay, so what it's basically saying is, go ahead, you gotta tick this. But as soon as you tick that, it, satisfy, it satisfies this condition, but now we get another one saying that we gotta go ahead and click the trigger in order for it to be worked. All right, so we got that done. Let's go ahead and I'll come back to the masks in just a bit. I wanna go ahead and jump down to density. Now density is, well, just like you think it is, it's how dense this liquid is gonna be. So the denser it is, the, the slower you're gonna move through it. So if I leave it at a setting of a two, and we go ahead, drop our guy into it, the crate should just fall. Uh, it slows it down, not enough to actually stop it, but if you take a look here, it does slow down when it hits, right? Of course, by the end, if I made this a little bit longer, it would eventually slow down a bit. But let's just go ahead and increase the density. Now, by increasing the density, it means you slow down faster. So let's try a five. We'll go ahead. And there we go. So it managed to stop it, and it pops up. And I'm not sure if you can see this line here, the green line. Let me turn the sprite off. This green line that goes across here. By default, it's always set to the origin of the sprite. So wherever you have the center set, but we can go ahead and change that with the second parameter. Well, I guess technically the fourth, but if we go ahead and move this up or down, it's basically where the surface of the water is. So where your objects are gonna float at. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up to the surface a bit. Let's move it up a bit more. No, I don't quite want this. Let's go right about there. Now, when we drop it in, it starts to be affected by the buoyancy settings as soon as it hits there. And of course, if we go ahead and grab it, I'm gonna drop it from a higher height so it has a little bit more speed when it comes down, or velocity. There we go, and back up. It actually bounces back out. Great, let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the next one. The next one is damping. Now this works just like all the other physics components work. Linear affects the movement, angular affects how fast it spins. So for our demonstration here, we'll go ahead and set this to 50. Well, let's get something dramatic. And now when we go ahead and start this, when the box hits the water, it's gonna slow down super fast. See how slow it moves like molasses? And of course, we've got the box. Drag it up even higher and let it go. Boom. So think of it as making it very, very thick and hard to move around in. And the same thing rotational, if something's spinning up really fast, when it hits here, it's gonna slow down super fast. And the last thing we can look at here is flow before we come back up to the masks. And you can actually have your water flow in one direction or another. Now it's just like uh, geometry back in, in high school, I guess in middle school. They teach in elementary school yet? My son's only seven, he hasn't hit there yet. But anyway, zero degrees is pointing to the right on the X. 90 degrees will point up on the Y. 180 degrees will point to the left on the X. And 270 will point down on the Y. So it's like in school how you learned. Zero degrees rotates around to 360, which of course is zero again. So let's go ahead and give this a flow angle of 180. That means when something falls in, it should flow this way. Let's go ahead and turn off that dampening. Let's bring it back down to five. And we'll go ahead and we'll drop it in. And it comes in and it doesn't look like it's quite enough to move it. And I actually didn't do that, sorry. In order to actually make this affect anything, we gotta give it a magnitude. And I'll just start off with 50. And we'll drop it in. 
And it should start to float. There we go. It smashed up against the side. Good. We'll move this over here a bit more. And let's lower this down to, say, 10. And then we'll go ahead and start it up. And it falls in. There we go. It flows back. And, of course, we go ahead and put it to 360 or 0. It's going to flow the other way. There we go. All right, we'll stop that. And for flow variation, that just adds to the actual magnitude, some random value. So in this case, I could go ahead, uh, let's put another 10 in. So the flow magnitude actually ranges anywhere from 10 to 20 now. And of course, we'll start it up, but it could well, really be anywhere in there. Now let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the collider mask. So the first one is whether or not you even want to use a collider mask. And if we go ahead and untick it, by default, it selects every layer in the game. Let's take a look at these layers. So what it's looking for are the collider masks, which if we open it up, are the exact same that you have set up for your layer masks up here. So if you only want it to affect certain game objects in your scene, you can go ahead and select different layers. So for instance, I'm gonna say, uh, let's go ahead and say nothing. And we'll actually, we'll say everything and we'll unselect ground. And what I'm gonna do is take my crate now. I'll set that to ground. And now when I drop it in, falls right through because it's on a different layer. And of course, if I want it affected again, I can go ahead and make it, whoops. I want it affected again. I can go ahead and just throw it back on a default or actually any layer in this instance, and it'll be affected. All right. So there we go. Everything we need to know about the buoyancy effector to get us started playing around with fluids in our game. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.